the next thing is Koshi's integral uh, theorem, which says that. What's that mean? It means that if you have a function in the complex plane, and this is C, it goes around in a circle, then this integral starting and in ending in the same place, if this is, uh, oh, there's something I never mentioned. The big thing then is our, um, our functions, it's, the word is holomorphic. I've been talking about it, but I haven't named it. Holomorphic means that it is differentiable everywhere. So that means that at every point, you uh, the derivatives going from one direction equal the derivatives the derivatives going from another direction. So in so it's basically smooth. It doesn't blow up anywhere. There's no uh, poles or it doesn't go to infinity anywhere. So that's holomorphic. In it can either be in a region or it can be in the whole in the whole plane. Um, and then the other word for it is analytic. So what that means is that uh, it's differentiable everywhere. So if, if the region here is holomorphic, meaning that there are no poles, which means it doesn't shoot up to infinity anywhere, if that doesn't happen, then the line integral is going to be zero. Uh, that's really fascinating. And again, if you've taken multivariable calculus, that sounds very similar because it is very similar to uh, Green's theorem, which says the same thing over vector fields. And you actually use uh, Green's theorem to prove that. So that's the first thing. So again, these um, the condition that a function be holomorphic, meaning that it's differentiable everywhere, adds a lot of, of structure and um, like uh, limitations to, to what the function is. It limits its behavior or it sort of like bounds its behavior in very strong ways. Um, so using this then, this now is one of the most amazing things in um, complex analysis and really in all of calculus uh, is the uh, Cauchy integral formula. And this says, let me write it down first and then I'll tell you what it, what it is. So one over two pi i integral um, over a curve of f of z dz over z minus a. This looks horrible. And if your brain is ever gonna shut off, it's gonna shut off right here because this is a disaster. F of z dz, f of a, one over two pi i. What is that? There's a gamma in there, and it's all it's a it's a fraction. So what does that mean? And what is the whole thing trying to tell us? This is where complex analysis gets really. It's really easy to get uh, just discouraged. Actually, it's not that hard. It's just you just have to go over it to get what's going on, and then. It actually is like, it's really cool and it's not that, it's not complicated at all. Um, but we just have to go slow to understand what each of these things are. So the first thing is that the two pi i, the reason that's there is just because we're talking about circles, which I'll show you in a second. What the Cauchy integral formula says is amazing. It says that if you have a function and you want to know the value of that function, then this integral will tell you the value of that function. So um, if we have, again, like this, say this is gamma, and um, this, is, this is the function uh, f, so it's coming out, going somewhere, you know, over to the, the range. And we want to know, there's just a point in here, A, we want to know what the value is there. 
what this says is that we can figure out this value basically using the Cauchy integral um, theorem uh, to figure out what any point inside this, this area is. And the reason the 2 pi i is there is because knowing that, that, a, cur that a, a closed curve, um, a closed line through the function is zero, if that's true for one, it's going to be true of all of them. It can be true of this one, this one, this one. So we can make it as small as we want around the point A. And then, so what we're doing here is we know, forget about A for a second. This is F of Z. We know that, that the uh, line integral around gamma is zero. Forget about A. If, if this is a continuous function, a di differentiable function, we know that, it's, that this is zero. So... We want to know what the value here of a is. So basically what this formula does is it takes out the point a and asks without point a, what's left? And then whatever's left, then that tells you what, that the whole thing minus that one point is, then the whole thing minus everything else is going to give you the point a. So you're basically removing the point and finding out what you end up with, and then that will tell you. So that if A has the point here, you know that the whole thing together has to be zero. So if you take out one point, you're gonna get one thing, then what's left, the A has to be what's left. That's how, that's how it, it works, it's very cool. So we'll uh, prove this, it'll make a lot more sense uh, when we go through it. Now the next step, this is again, this is why complex, out, complex analysis is so cool, because it goes on and on with these um, things that they figure out and things that, that they're figuring out that you, um, they're very difficult to do. Uh, uh, well, no, let me say that differently. There's just like, it just goes on and on. The implications go on and on ultimately to um, for Matt's last theorem. But oh, let me tell you what, so with the Cauchy, even the, um, the integral uh, theorem, The reason this is important is quite amazing. If you've ever thought about this, I used to think about this a lot in uh, uh, high school, that if you have a um, parabola, then in some way, there's actually two sets of, um, of answers here because the range of this only goes from zero up, but what about negative one? There actually is an answer. If, if you are assuming that F equals negative one, there is an answer there. We were talking about that before. It's X squared. That means that X would be I. So basically with every function, even though this function is entirely in the real plane, you can kind of imagine that there's this extra piece that goes this other direction into the imaginary numbers. There's this whole, like, like uh, it goes out of the plane into imaginary numbers, even when we're just talking about a real function. In some sense, there's still more to it. That's what complex, and that's what complex uh, integration is all about. Because let's say that we have um, some kind of a function, and it has this point right here that goes to infinity. It blows up for some reason. It's one over zero right there. Well, if you're trying to integrate along here, you can't because that point is infinity. You're not gonna get an answer. But using this, instead, what if we make a, a route around that hole? Then this is gonna be fine. This will just, we know that'll be zero. So if you just make this smaller and smaller and smaller, you can get an answer. Basically what you're doing is you don't like the you don't like this point in the real in the real plane, so you can just sort of go into the imaginary plane to get around the hole and then go back. That's that's sort of the power of complex analysis. It, it allows you to get around things in by going into this other dimension and coming back in some way. So uh, the next step before the last thing about complex uh, complex analysis is uh, Laurent series. Now, 
When I was in calculus, I hated Taylor series. It was something that I didn't understand. I didn't understand the point. No one ever explained it to me. And, and I didn't like it. Um, but what it is, is any, it turns out that any um, smooth differentiable uh, equation can be expressed as, um, as a polynomial. So, and this is true of every differential, differentiable equation. And then the, the reason this is so important is that this is really easy to differentiate and, um, and integrate. So if you can get your equation into, one of, into this, then from there, it's easy. So Laurent added something to this. The, these equations have to be smooth. Laurent added uh, some more terms plus um, ones with fractions. And with Laurent series, now you can even express uh, equations that have um, that have places where it goes to infinity. Like you can have you know um, x squared plus three over two x, for instance. Uh, that's going to have a place where it goes to infinity. You can now express that. You could not express this with a Taylor series because it's not smooth. You can express this with a Laurent series. So this adds a little power. And the amazing thing then is that with complex numbers, with uh, complex analysis, and using the Cauchy integral formula, you can take those Laurent series. So we have a0, a1, x, uh, I should say z minus z0. Um, plus b1 over z minus z0 you can um, manipulate these and all of these will disappear if you take the derivative enough you'll end up with uh, zero for all of this and uh, this one this one won't disappear this is the residue and uh, the residues are what's left around one of these equations. So if you have an equation that has a couple of poles in it, I mean, a, a, form, a function that has a couple of poles in it like this, a Taylor series won't work. The Laurent series will express this. And then we can even find the value of this function around a contour, even if it has these holes in it, using Laurent series. And this is what the residue, uh, the residue uh, theory is. It just equals um, the, first, uh, coefficient, the first coefficient of the um, fractions. That sounds totally bizarre. And it's true. And we'll, uh, we'll get there. This will be the last thing that we do for... Um, for the complex analysis. So all you have to do, you find the coefficient for each one of the poles, you add them up, multiply it by two pi i again, because basically we're going around in circles. And that tells you the value of this whole function in, the, in a contour around those poles. That's amazing, it's so simple. And all of that is because of what I was saying about how you can go around the problems in complex analysis and then just shrink down the problem to just the, the, the core. So that is complex analysis. Uh, that's all of complex analysis that we're going to go over now. Again, that's just an introduction. I think that we might go back over it in more detail, actually go through the book uh, another time. But... Um, now we're, I'm going to show you uh, the Weierstrass equations and 
that'll be it for this video, for this introduction. Then we'll go back over them. So the next 10 or 15 of these videos are going to be going over each section of this in detail leading up to the Weierstrass equations. That is elliptic curves over complex numbers. Then we'll be able to move on to modular forms. Okay, here is the link to the first video in this chapter. Here is the link to the previous video. Here is the link to the next video. And click here to subscribe and please join me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you.